I had a new heart and uh, I was smiling. I was grinning from ear to ear because I was so thankful because living in the hospital, you get to appreciate and if you're smart, you learn love, patience, tolerance, and understanding. Because there's so many angry people in the world. But after his operation, Bill says he started acting in strange new ways. Well, the first thing that really shocked me was that day driving to work. I usually listen to classic hard rock, Led Zeppelin, things like that. Don't ask me why, but that morning, I flipped it to like a jazz station. And I'm driving to work, and I hear this song, and it was uh, Sade, The Kiss of Life, and I started crying, and it was like butter going through a knife. And I usually don't cry. It takes a lot to make me cry. And uh, here I was, like, freaking out. Bill learned later that his heart's donor, Brady Michaels, was also a jazz aficionado. According to Bill, the transplant didn't just change his musical tastes, it also changed his vocabulary. And it's really funny. I can tell you as a cutthroat businessman, the, the surfer lingo and dude did not fit into my character. He also found he was copying Michael's taste for healthy food. He was a health nut. Um, he was very big on salads. In the old days, if there weren't french fries, if there wasn't a, a steak or a lobster tail or something fried, it wasn't going to happen. Now, once in a while, as a treat, I'll have something like that, but I actually love salads. Most astonishingly, Bill's new heart transformed him from an overweight couch potato into a physical fitness freak, just like Brady Michaels. Bill believes that in taking Brady Michaels' heart, he has taken some of Michael's personality. I'm living with a part of him that he's blessed me. And with that blessing has come some ideas and thoughts and characteristics that have kind of melded and, and become a part of my everyday life. Wow, this is all very weird. I told you it was weird. The guy gets a heart transplanted and he believes he got a bonus. He got the donor's personality too. And it's more than the heart. Think about it, there are thousands of other transplants done each year. Lungs, kidneys, livers. If this guy is right, are those people getting their donors' personalities as well? Is this even possible? Bill Wall's remarkable story suggests something that common sense says cannot be. Could our organs really store the essence of our being? Can one person's body assimilate the personality of someone long since dead? Psychology professor Dr. Gary Schwartz thinks so. If all tissues could store information and energy, then if a tissue was removed from one person and was surgically placed in another, there would be a transplant not only of the matter, but of the memory as well. Schwartz has researched the transfer of memory for 30 years and has tracked down some 70 cases of similar donor stories. I have seen too many cases of uncanny and accurate uh, parallels for me to question whether there's a phenomenon here. In 1988, Claire Sylvia received the heart and lungs of a young man who died in a motorcycle accident. After the operation, she develops a new taste for beer, green peppers, and chicken nuggets, things her former self would never have eaten. The donor's parents tell her that their son, Tim, loved nothing more than beer and green peppers, and chillingly, on the night Tim died, he was riding his motorcycle with a box of chicken nuggets in his pocket. There are examples from Bill's case which indicate the specificity above and beyond simple changes in diet or exercise which a lot of people might do because they had a heart transplant. Can't these personality changes be explained as a reaction to a brush with death or even as side effects of the powerful anti-rejection drugs used after transplant surgery? The first thing we want to entertain are conventional explanations like side effects of the drugs, stress of the surgery, or just uh, changes in, in, in philosophy of life 
they're given drugs and medication to tame down their immune system and most of the side effects and toxicity come from these immunosuppressant drugs that, that reduce the, uh, the response of the body to the new organ. A side effect of a steroid might change people's anxiety level or it might change uh, maybe a certain food preference but it's going to be random in relationship to the uh, preferences and personality of the donor. I don't think the anti-rejection drugs, as toxic as they may be, could explain the specific information that gets transferred. That, that would have to be pure luck or some actual mechanism of transference from the, from the donor to the recipient. So it appears to be too much of a coincidence to be the drugs. Dr. Stuart Hamarov has a radical theory that suggests something almost beyond belief. Can the human heart actually store our memories? It's not only the brain that can store memory, we have muscle memory, we learn to play tennis and, and there's uh, information stored in the, in the nerves that control the muscles and the heart has a lot of neurons outside of the brain, that's one of the largest collections of neurons in the body, the, the nodes that control the, the, uh, the beating of the heart and the conduction and the synchrony of the muscles so the heart beats together synchronously uh, are fairly a substantial complex of neurons. Neurons are specialized cells that transmit information via electrical impulses and chemical signals throughout the body's nervous system. The information they carry allows us to move, think, learn, and feel. Most neuroscientists believe that long-term memories are stored exclusively by neurons in the brain. Dr. Hamarov has a more radical theory. He believes memories can also be stored by neurons in other parts of the body within a cellular structure called a microtubule. Microtubules seem to be the most likely uh, site for memory to be housed because we know that in Alzheimer's disease where you lose memory, it's the microtubules in the brain neurons that fall apart. So there's a number of, of avenues of evidence that lead to the to fact that the microtubules are, are housing and storing memory. But it would be focused and more prevalent in parts of the body that have the most neurons, the most microtubules, namely the brain and the big nervous ganglia like the heart. If Dr. Hameroff is right, memories can be stored by microtubules in the brain, the heart, and the spinal cord, or anywhere else there are neurons. This could explain why, when Bill Wall got a heart transplant, he got a memory transplant too. Dr. Hameroff came to his theory of memory initially by studying neurons and anesthesia and then extending that to other organs, particularly the heart. So he's looking at a very special case of how a particular component of a cell can have memory. Um, and I wouldn't disagree with that. Throughout human history, poets and philosophers have invested the heart with powers and meaning beyond that of a simple organ. In Papua New Guinea, victorious warrior tribes would consume the hearts of the vanquished to absorb their qualities. In the arts, the heart has always been seen as the source of all love and passion. Who could refrain that had a heart to love and in that heart courage to make love known? That's Shakespeare. The heart is central to our culture and it is our own center. From the heart, everything flows. Now, some scientists believe the heart literally has a mind of its own. But, but could memory and intelligence be found in more than our hearts and heads? Could it be coursing through our whole bodies? Dr. Schwartz's theory takes things a step further. He thinks memory can be stored in all cells throughout the body, not just the neurons, thanks to something called feedback. Feedback is the essence of learning and memory. Now that same feedback process operates at any level. It's what operates within the neurons that allow the neurons to learn between them. But that same feedback that allows the neuron cells to learn is feedback that can operate within the interconnected network of cells in the heart or the lungs or any other organ. Feedback occurs when a past event influences the response to the same event in the present or future. According to Schwartz, this loop allows individual cells to have a sort of memory. That's another thing about these feedback loops, is a recurring process. Each time you repeat the process over and over again, it makes the memory stronger. Could our individual cells have a form of memory? Schwartz believes they do. And what's more, he thinks he can prove it. 
We typically think of muscle memory as being mostly the brain. But it turns out the muscles have the potential to learn as well because all muscles have feedback. There go feedback memory and muscle memory in the muscles themselves. Schwartz can show this principle in action. A person is able to train his muscles to shoot basketball hoops using feedback so that he continues to hit the basket even when blindfolded. According to Schwartz, it is not just groups of tissue that can have memories. He thinks it is possible that every single cell in the body can store information. Since feedback loops are operating at every level in the body, at every level, there's going to be theoretically memory and to various degrees learning at every level in the body. Although unproven, this theory could help explain the cases of transplant recipients who report receiving the donor's memories, tastes, and behavior along with their new organ. Interesting, but unfortunately all theoretical. Maybe uh, to find the answer to this mystery, we should take a look at a different organ, the human brain. Maybe, just maybe, now that Bill has his new heart and his health, it's gone to his head. Could getting a new lease on life convince you that you are a whole new person? Bill doesn't think it's all that simple. Certainly just getting a transplant and a second chance at life changed me in a major way, but I also totally believe that certain characteristics of my donor have become a basic part of my life, and I feel that this is the cellular memory that's changed my life and I honestly feel made me a better person, a happier person, and I actually love now caring and helping and wanting to make a difference. Most neuroscientists remain skeptical that cellular memory exists at all. Nevertheless, Bill Wall believes memories, just like organs, can be transplanted. 